fracture humerus and radial nerve palsy. The radial nerve can be identified as it runs through the spiral groove between the heads of the triceps. The nerve lies posterior to the deltoid tuberosity. The nerve crosses posterior aspect of the humerus about 20 cm proximal to the medial epicondyle and about 15 cm proximal to the lateral epicondyle. But when there is a fracture, the anatomy becomes distorted because of the fracture, so a different method is reliable. And that is, the radial nerve can be found 4 cm or 2 finger breadths proximal to the point of confluence of the triceps aponeurosis and the long and lateral heads of the triceps. The radial nerve enters the anterior compartment of the arm approximately 10 cm proximal to the elbow joint. Radial nerve palsy is about 8 to 15 percent in patients with humeral shaft fractures. It is usually in neuropraxia. Always check for radial nerve function. In holistine loss fracture, which is a spiral fracture of the distal third of the humerus, the neuropraxia of the radial nerve is approximately 22%. Check for the radial nerve function before and after reduction of the fracture, especially check rest and finger extension. The primary radial nerve palsy usually occurs from the injury with an increased incidence with the distal third holistine loss fracture and in mid-shaft transverse fractures. In closed fracture, usually there is a neuropraxia of the radial nerve that will improve with time. But with open fractures, consider that there is a laceration of the radial nerve, neurotemesis. In open fractures, there will be high incidence of partial or complete laceration of the radial nerve. Therefore, consider exploration of the nerve. If the fracture is closed with complete radial nerve palsy, Usually, the treatment is coaptation splint followed by a functional brace and observation for the return of the radial nerve function. 85% of the patients will show improvement in about 3 to 4 months and full recovery at 6 months. So, in open fracture, there is an absolute indication to explore the radial nerve with nerve repair, delayed nerve graft, or tendon transfer. If the open fracture is associated with radial nerve palsy, you do an IND of the open wound, you explore the radial nerve, and you fix the fracture. Patients with radial nerve palsy they usually present with weakness of wrist extension and finger extension. Make sure the patients extend their metacarbopharyngeal joint and not their interpharyngeal joint. The interpharyngeal joint extension is the function of the intrinsic muscles supplied by the under nerve and not by the radial nerve. And if you are not sure, ask the patient to hitchhike. It's a better test. When you check for recovery of wrist extension, eliminate gravity to be able to check the 2 out of 5 recovery. Again, its gravity will be 3 out of 5. And this is the way to check extension of the wrist with gravity eliminated. So how do you observe for nerve recovery? You mobilize the fracture, you splint the rest, and you obtain EMG and nerve studies in about six weeks. Fibrillation is bad, polyphasic is good. Monitor the brachioradialis muscle because it is the first muscle to recover. 
the extensor induces muscle is the last one to recover. Measure the distance from the fracture down to the brachioidalis, which is the first muscle to be re -innervated. This may give you the estimated time that is needed for the brachioidalis to get some innervation. The nerve will recover one millimeter per day. Wrist extension with radial deviation recovers first because the extensor carbi radialis, longus and pravus, gets innervated first before the extensor carbi and nerves. Then you will explore the nerve if the nerve failed to recover within 46 months. Patient may need tendon transfer. What do you transfer? To get wrist extension, you transfer the pronator teres to the extensor carbi radialis brevis. For finger extension, you can transfer the flexor digitorum superficialis or flexor carbi annaris or flexor carbi radialis to the extensor digitorum communis. For thumb extension, you can transfer the palmaris longus or the flexor digitorum superficialis to the EPL. In low velocity gunshot wound to the humerus, you will use coaptation splint even in the presence of radial nerve pulsing. Surgical approaches and iatrogenic radial nerve palsy. 20% incidence of nerve palsy from lateral approach, 10% from posterior approach, and anterolateral approach will give us about 5%. During posterior approach to repair a fracture of the distal third of the humerus, you can identify the radial nerve 4 cm proximal to the triceps aponeurosis. In anterolateral approach, the radial nerve lies between the brachialis and brachioridialis muscle. If the palsy occurs from surgery, you're going to watch for radial nerve recovery. If it occurs from manipulation and reduction, then it becomes controversial. Some people will explore the nerve, some people will wait and observe the nerve recovery. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.